My name is Popo, and I live in this great wetland paradise that belongs to my people, the Aztecs. Neighboring tribes are constantly jealous of the talents and skills the gods have bestowed upon my people. So we have enemies from all cardinal directions, north, east, south, and west. That does not bother me, because I am part of the great army that defends our city. I do not always think of battle. Princess Ista professed her love for me last week. Now, I think about her more than ever as we plan our wedding at the end of the harvest season, when the corn plants have reached heights almost double the height of our tallest warrior. Everyone shares our happiness with smiles stretching from ear to ear. Everyone except Fort Flax, the lead treasurer. I think he too has feelings for Issa, but she simply does not like him back. He is a nice, high-class guy. I'm sure he will get over it and he will be happy for us at our wedding. Unfortunately, our most bitter enemy tribe is attacking our empire from the south and I must lead my battalion into battle. That is where I am marching to now as I narrate the story. This has happened before and it takes only one month to put down the rebellion. It will be a month full of sadness one month away from Easter. However, I am wearing the most intricate, most decorated warrior armor our tailors have ever made. It would make the peacocks green with jealousy. With luck, I can see the hordes of rebels now, and I must fight. Popo fights there valiantly along his men, and the rebellion is put down. Popo is now returned home. He is at the palace of Princess Issa, but the expression on his face is one of sadness. Woe is me. I feel like my heart is torn out. I have arrived victorious after battle, only to find Issa has taken her own life. The coward Plax told her I had died in battle. She could not bear the thought of living without her soulmate, so it was better to not live at all. Now, I am holding her lifeless body close to my chest, watching as workers put the finishing touches on the project. I told them to stack ten hills together to make a mountain that reaches halfway to the glass. That shall be the resting place of my beloved Issa. The mountain is now complete, and Popo carries Issa to the summit. Here I will sit with this torch and watch over you for all eternity, my love. Never again will harm come to you. Popo begins to sob. The gods have been watching his effort all along. Now they take pity on him. They summon a second mountain to rise in close proximity to the one that Popo built. The gods lift Pro Popo from Easter side and they place him on the summit of the mountain they built. Using their powers, they cause Easter's body to come back to life, but immediately after she awakens, her body dissolves, mixing with the soil and becomes part of the first mountain. The same thing happens to Popo. Each mountain becomes a volcano. The lava represents the heart of each lover. By this time, Flax, the cow